Hello my friends and welcome back to another Brotato Danger 5 random random run where we take a random class and a random weapon and try to beat Danger 5 with it, going for as long a win streak as I can possibly manage. I hope you're all doing well and ready for some excitement. I'm going to spoil the results of the previous video, so if you haven't seen that one and do want to go check it out without any spoilers, now is your chance to jump out. So we won our last run, which was great. We're now at 75%. Uh, that's a two-win streak, but three wins and one loss overall. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. That's kind of the low end of what I would like my win rate to look like during this challenge. So I'm hopeful that I can increase it, but we're now much more within the ballpark of where I'd like to be at. This has been a really fun challenge where I kind of learn different weapons and different play styles, really enjoying playing it. So let's jump right into it and see what we get. We got the Renegade. All right, well, this is going to be a fun one and hopefully a pretty easy one because I think this is one of the most powerful characters in the game. Um, so let's see what weapon we get. I'm hoping to avoid, I guess, Wand is probably the worst for the Renegade, but we will see. And we got the submachine gun. I'm going to actually re-roll this because I already did the submachine gun as my renegade guide. And I do reserve the right to re-roll um, weapons that I have already covered or weapons that I think will be pretty easy. So we'll stick with the renegade, but I'm going to random a different weapon. All right, Ghost Scepter. This seems really fun, actually. So this is going to give us plus HP. And I'm going to try to build just six Ghost Scepters, I think. The plus two projectiles mean that individual Ghost Scepters will kill more enemies than normal. So that should be really fun for getting lots of HP. Really excited to give this one a go. The low damage is definitely going to be an issue. So normally you can't get... Uh, it's impossible to get an HP on your first wave. We, I don't think, are ever going to be able to kill that tree. Um, with the Ghost Scepter, but because the Renegade fires multiple shots, we were able to get a max HP from our Ghost Scepter, so that's kind of fun. I'm going to grab ranged damage here, because we definitely need that. And then I will absolutely buy another Ghost Scepter. Of course, we need all of the unique items, because that's how the Renegade works. We need to pick up every tier one item that we see, but I'm going to roll for more Scepters to try to upgrade those as soon as we can and only pick up items later on once we find ones that we really want. I'll buy another scepter here, and then is there anything I wanna lock here? I'm actually gonna lock book. This is not an item that's going to help a lot, but it's a very cheap 2% damage, so that's great. And then I'm gonna reroll. No scepter there. Baby Gecko is another one that's kind of worth considering, but I don't think we want that yet. And I'm gonna combine these to try to maximize our HP gain get as, as many kills on as few weapons as possible. <laughs> I like that, that shot that was just not even close to at the enemies there. <laughs> I'm not too worried about maxing out our, um, our ethereal weapon tag early. Because it's just not a super important tag. I'm going to reroll this either for ranged damage or for harvesting. Because I do want to start increasing our harvesting. And I'm going to throw in one more reroll here. Let's grab this. That will help a lot. Grab a Ghost Scepter. And then I can buy the book and reroll. Which I think is going to be our move. So that gives us a little bit of extra percent damage. And reroll here. We were looking for another scepter, but didn't hit it. So I'm going to lock the hedgehog. It's a new weapon and gives us our new item and gives us ranged damage. I think I'm going to leave ourselves with three weapons just to make sure I can keep wave clearing. It's possible we could get greedy there and go to two level two ghost scepters. But because I've actually not found a lot of weapons in my first two shops, I really want to ensure that I actually clear the waves and get to six weapons at some point. Renegade, of course, just wants as much damage as you can get, so that's what we're going for here. Again, I don't have the damage to kill that loot alien, so we just kind of have to ignore that. I don't... I guess I can start building dodge, because we're ethereal, so we can get to 60% dodge. This is earlier than I would normally like to build dodge, but I'm going to grab it just because it's level 2 there. I will take this hedgehog, 
and then roll again. I'm really looking for more scepters, and then I'm going to lock all of three of these. They're all unique items that are really good, so we're just going to lock those and keep going. This is a slow start for this character because our damage is quite low. We weren't, we just didn't have the damage to kill the tree in wave one. Didn't have the damage to kill the loot alien that showed up in wave three. So really hoping that we can get some damage. Ooh, that was very nice getting a, a box to drop there. Again, just don't have the damage to kill these trees, but this is very much a late game character. Gonna grab the dynamite because it's a unique item, so even though it doesn't do anything for our build, it's going to improve our damage, which is very important. And here I'll take flat range damage. We do need to build that up as quickly as we can. Grab this, I'm going to grab the weird food and then reroll, lock in another ghost scepter. And do I want to stay at three weapons? I think I'd better stay at four weapons here. And I need to build armor soon as well, because of course on ethereal weapons you have low armor, which can be a real issue in going into the late game. We are now at the point though where, because I built a little flat range damage, we're starting to clear these waves a little faster. I obviously need to not take another hit this wave, but I was trying to kind of maximize my HP gain. We're already at 21 HP, so I also don't need to focus that too heavily, but... Since we'll, of course, be building that with our Ghost Scepters. Uh, Peaceful B, because it's a unique item, I sometimes will avoid this on range damage characters, because losing one range damage is so bad for them. But it's a unique item, so it increases our percent damage, which is very important, and it boosts our dodge. Also, of course, getting harvesting going is really nice still at this point. I'll take eight harvesting, that gets us to 20. We can regain that one ranged damage. Keep upgrading Ghost Scepters. Buy both of these. So something that's kind of interesting is, do I want Scared Sausage? It's a unique level 1 item, so it is more damage for us, but it might steal kills from our Ghost Scepters. I think I do still want it, we just need to build this up as much as we can. Definitely grabbing the bag here, and Leather Vest is great for us, of course. These multiply very well with all the HP we're building. Do I want to combine two of these weapons, or just go to six Ghost Scepters? I think I'm going to stick with five and try to try to clear the waves rather than try to eke out like one or two more HP. The HP isn't that important to get early. We'll start picking up a lot of it like wave nine or so. And more important is just building up my income at this point. The leather vest is going to be really important to this build because it's going to increase our armor, which is a real problem. As you can see, we're taking seven damage a hit on wave six, which is very painful. Spawning a lot of trees, kind of nice. Actually got pretty lucky this wave. I'm gonna need some lifesteal pretty soon. But for now, the fact that we rolled a weird food early also helps a lot. I am going to re-roll this, see if we can get something better, and I'll just take 2% lifesteal. We need to start building that eventually, so very happy to get that going. Um, losing two harvesting to this bat is painful, but it's more, it's another unique item, so we definitely want it. Unfortunately, I can't buy small magazine and, um, like, scared sausage, so that means that I have to buy the bat if I want to buy an item here. The reason this is a problem is that it will bump my harvesting down below 21, Whereas if I waited one shop level to buy it, then I would still be gaining two per, per wave. Um, so I'm giving up like several points of harvesting by buying the bat. I think maximizing our purchasing though is still more important, as well as making sure that we actually have some shop slots open. As always with ethereal weapons, especially with low damage ones like we have right now, I want to be killing the eggs as much as I can on this wave because it's going to maximize our HP income. Trying to stay near these big clusters of units to 
make sure that we're clearing enemies as quickly as we can. Oops, let that one spawn. I was hoping to get that before it spawned, but no such luck. But we'll just run away, leave it on the other side of the map. I'm trying to navigate, so I'm picking up the fruits. I do want to break the tree, but I was worried about just getting trapped and taking a bunch of damage there, so we're giving up on that tree. We're definitely making very bad money on these waves. You should normally make like 300 on wave 7. So this is could be going better. Um, let's buy this, and I guess I will buy the alien tongue, leave this locked, and roll again. I really want to buy another ghost scepter. I'll lock the recycling machine and keep going. Right now, I'm just focused on damage, mostly, because, like I said, our income is actually quite bad. So, I need to make sure I am clearing these waves. We get a lot of free money, essentially, because we get a lot of free HP, so we don't have to spend on that. But with the, the very poor income that we're having, because our wave clear is quite bad, we are going to need that. And I, don't, I really don't want to fall too much further behind the damage curve, because that will make it very difficult for me to ever catch up. But given that we'll get a lot of free defensive stats from the ethereal weapons and from the HP, and of course Renegade just has a lot of offensive stats already from the pierce and extra projectiles, I think we'll be okay. I'm just going to take two armor here, try to get back to zero armor. It's not the, the best, you know, it doesn't increase our damage, but... I think that's still really worth doing. Grab this, I'm going to grab both of these, and then reroll. Finally get another Ghost Scepter here. I'm not going to take the Tentacle. Um, we, I just need to roll for level 1, unique level 1 items for our Renegade boost, or more uh, weapons, because leveling our weapons is going to be really important here. Going into Wave 9, I hope that we can pick up like 10 or 20 HP from this. Obviously, that would be a little easier if I had slightly more damage. As you can see, we are doing a little bit of damage with the... Oh. I, I took a lot of hits there and, and got lucky on those dodges. We actually could have died there if I hadn't, uh, hadn't gotten some lucky dodges. Um... As you can see, we are ticking a lot with the Scared Sausage, but it doesn't matter because we're not actually doing enough elemental damage to steal kills from our Ghost Scepters. Break that tree there. But I think it's really important that I got myself up to zero armor. Now we're much less likely to just randomly die. <laughs> Alright, 300. Our income is starting to look a little bit better, but still could improve a lot. Do I want lifesteal or dodge here? I think I'm going to go for 60% dodge as soon as I can, actually. So I'm going to grab that. And then here I will just grab two armor. Going to try to get damage just by buying unique items. So I'll grab the propeller hat. And I will grab the charcoal. Roll again. Now we can start upgrading our ghost scepters, which is great. Roll again. Lock this. Buy the ugly tooth. So that's a big deal. We've increased our percent damage significantly already feels very good to do that and have finally reached six weapons we're almost dodge capped as well with 54 hp so once i build just a little bit of lifesteal we should be in much better shape really just getting out of the very weak early game with the ghost scepters is, is what we needed to do here then of course elites are going to be their own problems so we'll have to play a little differently once we reach those but we do luckily have a horde as our first boss wave. It is fun how much HP we're building even in the quite early game with these Ghost Scepters, just because each of them is more likely to get kills thanks to the extra projectiles. I should probably have prioritized upgrading them more, but it's hard on Renegade not to just buy the unique weapons when they show up. The best thing I could possibly get would be bouncing shots. <laughs> Though that's pretty difficult given that our luck is quite low. 
but just a little more damage so that we're actually one-shotting these enemies will be a big deal. So our percent damage is reduced significantly because we're renegade, so I'm going to think about this. So basically we get 1.5% damage from buying the triceps here. I think I'm going to reroll and just buy the flat ranged damage. Then we'll just get our percent damage from buying unique items. Harvesting is still going to be good at this point, so I'll buy this. Combine and buy this. Going into a horde wave, this could be quite dangerous. I don't want to decrease my speed. Um, let me grab the Gummy Berserker as well. That's great. So duct tape, I already have one. Yes, I do. Um, increasing my, mac my armor, though, is quite valuable, but I don't think I'm going to lock it. So... We're now at minus 48% damage, but our attack speed has started to increase a little bit. Let's see what we can do here. And in a horde wave, we should hopefully be able to build up a lot of HP. Ghost Scepters really want attack speed and flat damage. And one thing that Ghost Scepters really want is Pierce, typically, but... Renegade, of course, comes with default pierce, so that's that's some synergy for the the weapon and the character. I'm kind of relying on my very good dodge percent and very high HP at this point, though, because the rib cages are very hard for us to kill with this low damage output build. I think if I hadn't had a horde, if I'd had an elite going into this next wave, I would have focused more on getting lifesteal, because... That would help us stay alive better. As is here, it's nice that we were able to focus a little on damage. 12% uh, dodge, that will put me way over dodge cap, but I think that's still fine. Then we can take any negative dodge that we encounter without having to worry too much about it. Alien Worm does decrease my consumable healing, but it is also a unique item, so I think I'm going to buy it here. I'm going to pass on the duct tape. I think we'll look for more efficient ways to buy armor. And then here, no unique items. Clover, actually pretty bad for us right now because we're already dodge capped. I wouldn't mind luck, but losing lifesteal is bad. So we're just going to pass on this whole shop. Here, though, I get to upgrade a warrior helmet, which will be, which will be very helpful because now we will have some armor and that will definitely help keep us alive. Can I buy both that and the ghost scepter? Yes. So that's great. And I am... <laughs> I'm actually considering locking and buying the handcuffs. It means we'll have low... We, we won't be gaining more HP from our Ghost Scepters. But 8 range damage is so much. Uh, I should also lock this pencil because it's a unique item. I think that if y for winning, to optimize winning, you should buy the handcuffs here. Because you don't really need more than 90 HP. But, I mean, we're, we're Ghost Scepter Renegade. So I'm just going to focus on getting the highest health I can. Because that's fun. <laughs> Capping your HP while using Ghost Scepters just feels kind of counter to the point. And also counter to the spirit of this challenge. Where the goal is to actually use the weapon that we... <laughs> picked, and if you had ended up picking this weapon combo anyways, and then like built into handcuffs, then the optimal optimal thing to do would be to um, sell out of Ghost Scepters at that point, of course, and buy real weapons. So to avoid having to deal with that whole situation, I'm going to pass on the handcuffs, but you know... I'm open to feedback on, like, the nature of this challenge, so if you think you would rather see me play it just, like, to win rather than to optimize for sort of the spirit of the challenge, then let me know. Um, I'm going to recycle this. We don't need two of them. I'm gonna recycle this. That's great. Here, I don't think I actually want this more harvesting. I'm just going to take 2% lifesteal rather than reroll because we do want to build our lifesteal up quite a lot. Grab small magazine. Buy this pencil roll again. Medical turret, I don't think we need. Injection is great here, even though it doesn't the, the percent damage is lowered. It's still really nice to grab that. And then let's roll again. Grab this wheelbarrow as well. And the shady potion will be good 
2, so I will definitely go into that going into wave 14. The things that I need the most at this point are armor, damage, of course, we always need damage, and move speed, and a little more lifesteal. But I guess in order of importance, I'd like to get up to about 5 to 10 armor, and then just as much damage as we can get. Because right now I'm taking 16 a hit, which is quite painful at this point in the game. Even with our very high dodge. A lumberjack shirt would really help as well. I'm spending a lot of attacks on these trees. And every time we attack a tree, we're not attacking a an enemy and gaining health off of them. Let's grab this for sure. And then here, do I just want percent damage or do I want something else? No, I'll take move speed. Getting back to full move speed is great. I am going to buy this toxic sludge just for 2% damage by the Shady Potion. The lure I'm going to lock and not buy this wave because we're going into a horde wave, but I do want the lure eventually. And we'll buy both of these, that's great. Um, do I want to throw in one more reroll? I've only rerolled once, so I'm, I'm gonna pass. We already have a, an item locked. That move speed helps a lot. Horde on wave 14 is always a little dangerous. One of the sad things about Ghost Scepter Renegade is that you can't roll the Scythe, which often ethereal builds want to roll Scythe. Okay, we're having trouble regenerating health because I'm not dropping enough consumables, and right now my lifesteal is still pretty bad. And the, the amount of... Uh, hits we're taking, so I, I played that one much too risky. Just going for that consumable there. <laughs> also, my consumables only heal for 4 now instead of 5, which is really pressure putting us under HP pressure, but we made it out of that okay. I have 5% crit chance. I don't know if the hunting trophy is going to pay for itself at this point. I think I'm going to pass on it, probably. Take the lure. Um... Because I don't think we can afford to spend too much on crit chance. It feels bad to pass on hunting trophy, which is an excellent item. But I just need to focus on like damage and percent damage. Buy this and this for sure. Roll again. And I guess I'll take the snake. It's so important to boost our percent damage. And every, every point when it's this low, every point we get matters so much that it's worth buying those things, even if they only give small amounts and cost a reasonable amount. Yeah, so as long as I get some healing, just a little bit more lifesteal, like a whetstone would basically solve our problems. Obviously, fairy would be really nice too, because we're renegade and have a million different level 1 items. Um, but if we get any decent amount of healing, then we, we should be in great shape, because our HP is really good. So that's the only thing that I really need to, to worry about for the rest of this wave. And then, of course, more damage is really valuable. Trying to kill that loot alien, but he charged right off on into the big pile of enemies there. We are taking a lot of hits for a character with 60% dodge. I feel like I'm getting quite unlucky on these dodges, honestly. <laughs> I'm going to recycle this because we already have one. I'm going to re-roll this. Even though I want lifesteal, I don't want 1% lifesteal. I will just take 12% damage, I think. It gets cut down to 2.5% damage, but that's still valuable. Um, take this snake. Do I want the blindfold? We already are dodge capped, so I think I'm going to pass on it. And 
losing crit chance for melee damage, but I think it's still worth buying the goat skull here. I'll buy the lure. I'll roll again. Panda. I mean, I think I want all of these, so I'm going to lock them all. Again, even though we pay a premium for it, every point of percent damage we get is such a huge boost to our DPS. Because it's our lowest number by far. That I still like to prioritize buying percent damage on the Renegade. I think the advice you often see is don't do that because, you know, it's less valuable per, per material that you spend on it or less less damage per material that you spend on it. Let me try to get this loot alien. Nope, he hid in the crowd, I think. Yep. Uh, these loot aliens are really jumping into the crowd. Also, when they get the buff, it feels so bad. All right, buying these lures may not have been worth it because we just don't have the damage to clear these waves. So every time I buy lure, I just add some loot aliens that then absorb shots and don't die. Take that. I can't remember if we have one already or not. Um, I'll buy this lifesteal, and that's great. That gets us much closer to our the amount of lifesteal we need. Buy the coffee. I guess I want the panda for the luck going into this next wave, and I'll just upgrade a ghost scepter. Keep the cyclops worm locked. That 3%... lifesteal that we picked up will help so much going into this elite wave. Unfortunately, this summoner is very dangerous to us because we just don't have the damage to kill the high health units it summons. I should should have avoided just focusing damage on it and just killed the eggs instead. So right now we're just going to be playing a pure survival game using lifesteal. Also, every time one of these rib cages gets buffed, it's really bad for us because they, they're going to catch me very easily. So I'd like to be able to focus the buffing aliens, but can't quite do that. Trying to dodge here. Getting a little lucky on our percentage dodges. <laughs> Took a hit, but we still have 44 HP. Whew. All right, that was very close. Um, this is not, this run is not going well, but maybe we can still turn it around. Let's grab some max, some range damage. That will help. Oh, this heavy bullets will help a ton. Very happy to see that. And I'll lock this as well. Roll again. Upgrade a ghost scepter. I mean, we're basically just surviving based on our, our HP <laughs> just being really high. Need a little more healing. One issue with lifesteal on the Renegade is that multi-shot weapons, you only get lifesteal from one projectile. Um, so like a shotgun is actually quite bad for lifesteal because it only actually lifesteals off of one of the, the shotgun pellets. Trying to kill as many of the buffers as I can, but the, the damage has already kind of been done. They've buffed so many of these enemies. This one's this this runs definitely a struggle. I honestly thought it would be a little easier. I think there were some decisions I could have made quite a bit better. Um, mostly, I needed to level my weapons sooner, I think, and I needed to prioritize getting life steal sooner. Uh, stone skin. We don't need the max HP, so I'm going to recycle that. This uh, recycling machine has been great. It's paid for our. It's really helped upgrade our damage. Or our income. Ritual is excellent here. Grab this Ghost Scepter upgrade as well. Being only at 10% lifesteal going into the last wave would be bad, so I'm hoping I can find like a little bit more. I mean, 10% is, is fine usually for range builds, but since we're kind of just a healing build, a tanking and healing build, Also, every point of armor I get is super valuable, so I should really be on the lookout for that. So, I guess what I would change if I was doing this again is I would prioritize armor and lifesteal more and focus less on damage, because 
I bought a lot of damage to try to wave clear, but we never really reach the point where I'm actually wave clearing. Although, if I hadn't focused this heavily on wave clear, we'd be making less money, like even less money per wave. So it's it's kind of complicated, I think, which of like what decisions I could have made to make this easier. I still I think we're gonna win. Um, so you know, at the end of the day, what matters is that we win. But we're really struggling to wave clear and make money here. Uh, I'm just gonna buy one armor rather than reroll a bunch because, like I said, one armor is so valuable. And I will grab this metal for the same reason. I can can I afford both of these? Not quite, right? So I'll buy the ritual for the healing. Then I guess just reroll, see if there's anything that comes up. Ooh, if, if I'd gotten the coupon and the lost duck a little earlier, both of those would have been unique items that would have helped a lot as well. So if you remember my renegade guide, we ended up with like 50% damage because I was able to just buy damage because we were making so much money. Here, because I focused on... I guess I, I also focused on getting dodge up early. Maybe that was a mistake, and I should have focused more on damage. But we ended up with 10% lifesteal, 214 HP. So we should be okay going into this last wave. We're not going to kill these bosses. We just don't have the damage for it. But as long as I can maintain my health and dodging reasonably well, we should be okay. Then again, I had a recent, you know, one of the others in this series. I died on the bosses because I just didn't have adequate healing. So that that seems to be kind of a theme for these builds, is that I need to focus on healing more than I have been doing in these random random runs. Which which is interesting, because I think I am, as a Brotato player, just like what I have seen in comments and stuff, I focus much more heavily on defensive stats than most players. And so... Having my conclusion be, I need to do more defensive stats, um, is really interesting. At least here, unlike the speedy, I can stop, which makes it much easier to dodge these, the attacks of the bosses here, if you can stop. It helps you not get hit by them. Uh, you want to play kind of close to the octopus head, oh, I just took a bunch of hits in a row there because my dodging is really bad, and my percent dodging is kind of letting me down, walking into every attack here. <laughs> um, you want to play kind of close to the octopus head. It makes it easier to dodge into big circle. All right, we took a bunch of hits at the end there, but luckily I had 225 HP, so we made it out. So this one is not the cleanest win I've ever seen, but uh, we got there in the end and carried on the strength of Renegade. Um... Ended up with 225 HP, which also not the highest from Ghost Scepters. Just the amount of damage we were doing was so low. And I think usually you would want, if you were doing a Ghost Scepter Renegade build, to transition one of your weapon like into other weapons once you had 100 HP or so. Um, I think it would have been very interesting to take the, the Path Less Traveled and pick up that handcuffs there, capping at 90 HP, but having a lot more damage, I think it would have been very interesting to see how that build played out. Um, we'd have ended up with a lot more farm, but obviously wouldn't have had 200 HP. So it would be... I'd be very curious to see how the timelines would have diverged there if I had made that decision instead. All right, my friends, I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, of course, please feel free to hit like, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel for more of this and other strategy game content. Um, this has been really fun doing these random random runs, and I will continue to do them as long as I keep enjoying them. We're up to a three-win streak now, feeling pretty good about that. And so that will be that. I'll catch you next time. Cheers, and GG.